Chris? Think yeah. We, think we need a video idea. What do you think? Tackle review? Tackle review. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Christian Hatch and Jason. Jason just pulled a toad out of Walnut Pond. I just caught a little dink in uh, recording. He's going to be on the video. Look at him. He's chubby, man. enjoyed that new intro that was just rolling um right now we're gonna go over our two bags that we have for this fall lighting, uh, weather lighting, coming in lighting, lighting. lighting. there uh -huh. we go okay kind of uh and we're gonna go through our bags where we got our bags what we keep in our bags and why we keep it in there uh we're gonna do kind of different angles uh some really fun things um and we will see you back in three two hit the button Um, first I'm gonna be going first and so to start off with my bag is gonna be uh, this nice uh, woodland camo colored uh, bag I picked up for I believe $30 from Amazon uh, and on the outside first I keep a multi tool on the outside a nice little Leatherman wave I love this tool it's a great tool uh, anything made by Leatherman is a great great tool um, but next so I have my Leatherman here uh, next, in my top little pocket here, I keep all my essentials. So I have extra, uh, <laughs> I have extra lenses for the camera. I have nail clippers to cut line. Tape because we always end up needing to tape something because we always break things. Uh, and a little fish scale to weigh uh, fish. Uh, yeah, it's uh, made by Mango Spot. I bought this. Uh, for about ten dollars on Amazon, it's a great little scale. Um, I always keep a pair of craft craft scissors, you know, craft shears. It's a good uh, good tool to have on you at all times. And when you never know, you I have a uh, a mult, uh, survival knife on me at all times because uh, you never know, you know, even though we're fishing in small lakes around town, you know, you never know when you know you might need to start a fire or have a uh, have a knife on you with a good durable knife. Um, so first my, my, starting off with my first, uh, and closest by baits, this is what I call my plastics back, my plastics pocket. So, and this is where I keep all of my plastics in. So, and these are all the baits I have in at all times. These are a small flipping and pitching, um, plastics I just keep in a small Ziploc bag. As you can see, it's crawdad colored, almost like a, uh, green and... Uh, orange colored uh, and I just have a little Ziploc baggie full of them also I keep uh, these fluke these fluke style juniors Charlie's worms in them they're great lures I love using them uh, they're but they are very delicate lures I suppose where it just um, it takes a while to uh, get used to how soft these plastics are but they are good plastics I got this in my MTB, uh, my September MTB box. No, sorry, my October MTB box. They're great lures. Uh, Charlie's Worm, I would definitely uh, recommend. Next, I got these in my uh, LTB. And, you know, you can see over there in the corner, I have all my boxes from MTB and uh, LTB. Uh, these are nice little craws. Uh, they're really, I personally would use these as a trailer craw. But these are also very nice to use as just pitching craws because it's uh, almost like a tube style bait as in the bottom. But it has that very distinctive craw uh, claw and color at the end. So if you were to rig this up on a Texas style rig, you just and it would stand up just right on end and keep that uh, defensive posture that is so commonly well known for uh, craw style baits. Next, I have... 
Uh, I have Biwa Prism Stick Baits. These are very, very scented. Uh, they're kind of uh, shrimp uh, scent, I believe. They're black with a blue sparkle in it. Uh, very unique size, very unique color. Uh, I love these guys. They're great lures. Next, these uh, I have these uh, big bait, uh, big bite baits, uh, chartreuse tipped um, j uh, jigging worms. Now these are great for Ned rigging, drop shot, um, wacky rigging, even uh, Nico rigging. These guys are great for different uh, different applications. And like the um, the Charlie's worms, these are very very soft and they rip very easily. But don't let that uh, stop you. They are still a great lure as long as you know how to properly use them and keep them from ripping. Uh, next, I keep just dark crawd, uh, dark. Dark car, craw colored, uh, almost like a Reese's colored. Um, there's uh, flipping craw. I love flipping craws on Texas styles. Um, next, I keep my boot tail swim baits, and I'll do them at the same time because they're about the same. I got this in my MTB, or yeah, my MTB for September. Uh, they're just a extremely <laughs> potent smelling swim bait on them. Uh, as you can see, extreme squid scent. Uh, these are great lures, but they smell awful, and I haven't even opened this yet because they just are such a strong smell. And then, Swimming Impact, uh, Fat Kentec, uh, Boot Tail Swim Jigs. You can see that I've used them almost all. Um, these are great for trailing, for buzz bait trails, anything. These are great lures. All right, and next, I will move on to my second pocket, which is the second biggest pocket in this bag oh and I have my chesty in there or our chesty that we use in the videos get some really good video quality from that um, then this is my jig box now my jig box uh, is a basically as it sounds it has all my jig lures in it so I have just basic swim jigs uh, handmade hand poured by myself uh, football jigs uh, Another uh, football jig. I don't remember the make of these jigs, but a uh, um, little swim jig. Uh, probably my favorite lure to throw in the small lakes and ponds that we're fishing is this chartreuse and yellow chatterbait. It's a great lure. Love working with it. And pro and I got these. Now this uh, was the fluke that I got in my MTB this uh, this month. But this is the jig head I got this month in my, I believe, my uh, LTB. Now, I like, see, this is a hookless jig head with a tungsten weight and, a ver like, a bluegill pattern skirt on it. And I like to rig this as a swim jig. Awesome action. Great, great action. Uh, and then I got this zero-gravity swim jig from my MTB box as well. All right, and so that's my jig box. Next, oh, that fell off. That's great. <laughs> Next, I have my what I call my terminal tackle box. I just have you know my huge assortment of weights and hooks. I have swivels and screw and screw uh, screw flashers. Now you will see these in a in a video soon. I love these guys working with these guys. Uh, adds a great action and uh, flash to a, the um baits that we use and I just have just ran I'm my terminal tackle box is a, is a mess right now but uh as you can see I have you know Ned rig hooks uh jig hooks swim bait hooks weighted swim bait hooks uh I even got this from a September MTB box it's a uh, uh supposed to be a drop shot hook all right and there's that box and so I also have this little pouch that I keep my uh, fishing license. Always fish with a license because, especially here in Nebraska, they find like crazy for fishing, for fishing without a license. So just to be safe, we always have our fishing licenses on us. And then in our in my last bag is my probably my most expensive part of my bag. Well, first we keep a first aid kit because I'm always hurting myself. And so is Jason, even though he doesn't like to admit it, but he is glad that I have this on me at times. All right, and then this is my hard, my hard, my hard baits uh, container. 
I uh, mostly full of uh, swim baits. I have the soft bodied plastic uh, chartreuse square bill crankbait that I got in my September MTB. I got this tiger stripe square bill in my October uh, MT uh, LTB. Uh, another square bill, uh, small perch colored swim bait. Uh, this live target frog popper that I love working with. Um, and then on the other side, it's a dual-sided box. By the way, Plano, uh, of all fishermen, you know, uh, Plano is awesome quality, awesome gear boxes. And now, a cheap, I believe I paid like $1.50 for this little popper here. Very cheap deal here, but it's a good popper, you know, it has great action, good good floating on it. Uh, chartreuse square bill crankbait, if you can't notice, I love working chartreuse square bill crankbaits. Uh, now this is a unique uh, lure that I saw, it's a, that I got from Walmart, I believe, it's a, what they call a torpedo, and it just sends tons of vibration when it swims through the water, this propeller goes and starts making a bunch of racket and splashing water. And then I just have a lightweighted uh, little kind of jerk bait it's a sinking jerk bait really neat and then probably my favorite lure that i own is this lipless crankbait made by gary yamamoto very very sticky sharp hooks nice rattles in it don't know if you can hear that but it's very very noisy and it's a great lure and then two more boxes and we're done this is my uh kind of like a mess box <laughs> i have this big old uh this now these two lures are very weird but this is a huge jerk bait that i found on the side of a, a lake and i'm like hey free lure <laughs> and so i picked that up and i kept it uh, a nice little tube style bait uh, i have a buzz bait in here two uh spinner baits my frogs are all in here for pitching frogs and little swim baits yeah that's kind of like a mishmash of baits in that box but uh that's kind of like just my throw around box uh that i don't know what to do with and then lastly this came as a set this is a great box and lastly it's by yum obviously they're yum plastic lures i have bullet weights all in here I have all my hooks in here. They're roughly all the same size. I have a boot tail swim bait, lizard style, bass colored Sanko style lure, Ned rig style uh, Sanko, ribbon tail worm, really long, probably like what, a six inch ribbon tail worm. Uh, and then this really unique, almost for like uh, very clear water lure. Uh, but yeah, so basically, that's my entire tackle setup that I have. Um, but yeah, tell me what you think about it in the comments. Uh, and next, we're going to see Jason's tackle review. All right, guys, so I'm going up next. Chris took a long time. I did take a long time, but, but I have a lot of stuff in there. I don't so. have as much tackle. We're going to see my bag. It's not as cool as Chris's, but... Not as cool. It only has tackle in it. Not that big of a deal. Anyway, go to my review. My tackle review... Um, I don't have as much stuff as Chris, but we're going to go through it. So, first pocket, just got my Leatherman, and then a really crappy knife that I don't even know why I have. But I have them, and then there's just some change in there. My second pocket, I got some leftover line from, this is on the spool on my secondary rod that broke a couple videos ago. So I got to spool that back up with this. And I just have some dividers for my tackle. In the next pocket, I got all my plastics are in here. So I got, let me pull them all out here. I got all kinds of craws and Sankos. And my grub worms that I saw in the Cabela's video. Uh, these are the ones you saw in the very first video. And then these are the ones that Chris gave me in the last video. Um, it's not a whole lot of package worms, but that's really all I need. I don't really use them a whole lot. Um, these ones are actually probably one of my favorite, just because you can use them for just about anything, along with the grub. Uh, I can put these as trailers. I can put them as jigs. Uh, I can use these sometimes for drop shot. Um, it, it's just a multi-purpose uh, 
slough plastic that I can use. So I mean, I can't really buy Yamamoto's all the time. So I try to buy stuff I can use in multiple things. Um, next, I have a box. It says Carolina Rig, but it's just an old box. It's got all my stuff. Some of this is Carolina Rig stuff. But I use these as uh, really finesse worms. Um, we went out to Methodist Pond once, and I threw this with a jig head hook, and it's just got great action. Uh, lizards, more just worms and soft plastics. All this stuff basically just acquired over the years. I mean, I haven't used a lizard in forever, but I still have them in case I need them. Uh, so yeah, that's my plastics. And then the main pocket, I have two tins here. I have more of my plastics in here. A couple hard baits. I really don't have an organization for any of this. As you can see, there's just Sankos sitting in here and more worms. Um, these are probably the cheapest type of worm I've ever bought. It's like, it feels like hard plastic and rubber because it was like 99 cents for package and I just bought it. Um, then I have my only uh, square bill crankbait that I throw a lot in the fall. Um, I've never actually caught a fish on it because I only thrown it about twice, but it's the only one I have. Um, my favorite worm right here. I've caught many fish on this worm. It's like a blue purple. Um, it's just the right size and I just throw it all the time. I uh, got some grub here, uh, a little bit of worms. I uh, use these as a drop shot. Uh, worms right here. I mean, they don't have air in the tail, but they work just just as well as if they would I mean, they're perfectly fine um, My buzz bait is in here only because it's the only place it'll fit as you can see It's still rigged up with the trailer from a couple videos ago And I just that's mostly plastics in here and a couple hard baits because I ran out of room in the other one um, And then my other box my last one I have has all my hooks all my weights uh, this is my spinner area. Uh, I don't know why we have a Senko in here. Um, all my frogs are right here. And my spook. I still haven't thrown the spook that we saw in the video. We went to Cabela's. Um, but I'm hoping to throw that later. Uh, I bought a pack of three of these. Uh, they're just little, I don't even know what you call them, swim bait, jig type bait. I don't even know what to call it really. I have had three of these. I've never caught a fish on one and I've lost two of them. So it's not a whole lot of good luck with that. And I have uh, my only jig that I have. I don't know why I only have one, but I have some jig hooks here. Um, just some smaller hooks with some trailers. And so yeah, there's the, uh, I don't know if you can see this. If I can get these apart here. Here's the trailer Chris was talking about. You just put it on the back of the Senko and you Texas rig it. And you can kind of um, just use it as a, weightless Senko and then as it falls down this will spin as like uh, it's just a tail on what would be a spinner and just adds a ton of vibration once it hits the water it's just immediately striked uh, I've caught a few fish on that kind of style but yeah that's uh, I think that's all I have in my bag I have the selfie stick from our old videos you guys can see that it's quite beat up but it's all we had at the beginning so yeah oh I have one more, one more box actually this is uh, Chris's box. Actually, I do have another jig in here. I forgot about this. So yeah, this is the box Chris gave me. I got a jig in here. Uh, just a little hard swim bait. I can unhook it. There we go. With more trailers. Trailers really work around here because the fish don't really just sit except for at one pond. They're always moving. They don't because a lot of what we fish are pressured ponds. So, that, I mean, they don't really have time to just sit and wait. So, you got to have a lot of moving baits when you live around here. Uh, just a little tiny jerk bait. And then there's the, uh, I think these are in the M MTB or LTB box. Um, these are the hooks that were uh, supported by breast cancer. That's where they're out in October. Uh, that's why they're uh, pink right here and they have a weight. And it's for, sw I think it's swim jigs. You could really put on anything, but uh, a couple hooks here. And uh, I think this is actually, as I drop things. Here's another Do not lose that hook drop <laughs> drop shot hook here. Um, so yeah, that's that's all I got for tackle here. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. Why are you on my face?